In a time when men held most power, Eleanor of Aquitaine surpassed many of them. She inherited lands in her own name and also became Queen of France and Queen of England. She was one of the most powerful individuals in medieval Europe. Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. In this video we will transform her tomb and portraits to see how she might have looked in real life. If you're new to my channel, welcome. Here on Mortal Faces I take portraits and transform them to see how individuals we read about might have looked in real life. So let's get started. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more historical recreations. And let me know in the comments who you'd like to see in real life. Eleanor was born around 1122, around the west of France, maybe in Poitiers or Bordeaux. Her father was the Duke of Aquitaine, whose lands were in more of the south of France, and her mother was the daughter of a Viscount. They had two girls and a boy. Eleanor was the eldest, and her younger brother died young, so she became heiress and inherited her father's lands, including the dukedom and a county, becoming a duchess and a countess in her own right. So these were substantial pieces of property. When her father died in 1137, she was only a teenager, so he bequeathed that the king of France take care of her and her property. However, until a husband is found, the king had control of these lands. As these lands were vassals, and probably the most valuable ones at that, he wanted to absorb them into his own crown and gain a direct control of them because power and riches. So he married her to his son instead of an outsider. A few days later after their wedding, the king dies and they become king and queen of France. You can imagine a young, high-spirited girl. She was about 15 and he was 17. Her husband, Louis VII, loved her and spoiled her, so she was basking in the latest trends and luxuries. To put it shortly, there were differences in the reserved culture of the northern court in Paris, where Louis had been raised, and the rich, freewheeling life of the southern Aquitaine court, with which Eleanor was familiar. And you can even see these differences today between northern France and southern France. Very different cultures. And that's what Eleanor had to deal with. She received a lot of criticism and was seen as too high-spirited. They're like, settle down, relax. She didn't relax, and here's what happened next. Her husband had a conflict with the Pope and some other guys. With all his rage, he burned down a church that held 1,500 refugees. The new pope, because the one he didn't like died, said, I see you feel guilty from that incident. Go do a crusade and you'll feel better. So he did. Eleanor was like, you're not going to leave me behind. So she took up arms and got an army from her own lands. Remember, she had property in her own right and said, you who wait for me. Here's my army. It wasn't very successful. They didn't do much really except boost their egos. But people really admired Eleanor for doing this. They saw a brave young woman taking the reins of her horse and fighting alongside her husband. The trip was a bust though. They lost troops, they lost supplies, they were ambushed and mugged. It was a big mess and by the end of the trip, the couple were on two separate terms. You see, they were married for 15 years and had no male heirs. So on their way home, they stopped off in Italy, met their friend the Pope, and got an annulment. You see, the marriage was estranged before the road trip and all that drama didn't help them either. For the next 37 years, between 1152 and 1189, when she was 30 to 67, she orchestrated and married the future King of England. Henry II, and two years later in 1154, she became Queen of England. They popped out a big family, but he was promiscuous and fathered other illegitimate children. Eleanor and Henry were both strong-willed, and they often had differing opinions on the issues of the day. Eventually, they separated on good terms, and she went to go live with her daughter back in France. The entire time, though, she still had her lands in France, including Aquitaine, who, despite her two husbands, refused to listen to no one but her, their duchess. So she was always very influential, despite her moving about. Relations between Henry and Eleanor soon got worse, and when three of their sons rose up against their father, Eleanor joined their cause. The king put down the rebellion and imprisoned the queen. She lived in house arrest in a number of castles, 
for more than a decade and then joined the king on some of his travels. Henry II, her husband, died in 1189. He was 56, she was 67. She had eight kids with Henry II and two with her previous husband, Louis VII. She outlived all of them except two. By the time she died in 1204, she was about 82 years old and saw her youngest son reign as King John of England. Her whole life, Eleanor was in a league of her own. If she was going to make a decision, she was going to do it. There's a lot more to her life, like she was kidnapped, she acted regent to both her adult sons who were king, effectively ruling England when they were absent. She negotiated on their behalf and even went on work trips in her late 70s. As I said, a league of her own. And that's just a little bit about Eleanor of Aquitaine. And that brings me to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to see more historic recreations, please consider subscribing to my channel. Each of your subscriptions helps this channel grow and it allows me to continue to create more content for you. Let me know in the comments who you want to see in real life. I do make a list of all your suggestions and I will see you in the next one.